Good morning, everybody. I'm Ed Parcone here with Mike Kelly, and we are Real Estate Jerky Daily. How are you doing today? Lee. That we means that's are. every day except for Saturday and Sunday. Sunday exactly. So it's day Lee. Day week. week. Day week. Day weekly. Weekday. Yeah. Yeah, our weekend is the radio show Saturday and the replays on Sunday. Who are we talking to this weekend? Uh, David Albin, the guy for that's coming to help for us put the on firewalk. the firewalk. What firewalk? Operation firewalk. firewalk. Please get everybody to sign up. We need to know numbers for the food, how much we need to have. And if I'm, you can only do Saturday, do Saturday. Whatever so day it is, up. just sign up. I need to know the days for the foods. Please sign up. You got to sign up by Thursday to tell me what the days are. All right, uh, so get the word out. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody who has been. It just, you're, that sounds funny. Has been. You're a has been. You're has been. You're washed up. <laughs> you're no longer. All right, so uh, that. go ahead. Tell us what our numbers are. Then we'll get into the rest Let's of it. do the numbers, man. Uh, All right, dude. <laughs> dude. Sweet. What, what does mine say? Come on. I said share. Come on today. I said share. You, you know, share. Come on. Come on. No, what? it's you. Pick the screen. I know it. There we go. Look at that. 555. That's the devil's stepchild. Close sales per day. 605 pending sales per day. That's increasing. Week ending. That's increasing. It is March 30th. Um, and then 526 new listings per day. What's That's that? What's that little thing that says new? New? Right next to it, it says like little new, new listings. <laughs> <laughs> like that's never been there before. Yeah. New. Maybe they should put just listings per day and have that over there also. Then it stands out. There more. you go. Well, you know, you gotta you gotta bling things up when you're when you're presenting things so people what? have something else to look at. What are you at. guys saying? What oh, are they those saying? Are down. These are down, but they were down last week too. So These negative Nellies. Yeah, kind of almost twelve and a half percent across the board, right? Uh, Maybe average it. Yeah, averaging it. <laughs> yep. Closed a sale, entered an escrow, or listed a property. What are they saying? They're still positive. No, this is what they think will happen. Yeah. This, yeah. What they think yeah. will happen. They're still positive. Right. They're like one in three or it's a only, bit more than that. Hey, sales are up. It's still only March. One in five. Prices are up. Yeah. <laughs> Listings will be one up. in two or one in point two. One point two. They're yep. saying uh, listings will be up. You keep saying that. Keep yeah. saying it. Things will happen. Well, and you know what? With numbers, those numbers are bigger than they were all last year. Yeah, we're up twenty six percent more with listings, even though we're down half of what we normally should be. Oh, but compared to last year and the year before, we have more listings. Things are looking up, up, up. You're not looking that much up, but <laughs> uh, the negative out right now is this: the rates in general, right? Um, and then we're going to be here for a while because everybody keeps saying, "Okay, we think they're going to uh, lower rates again." I'm just the lights. It looks yeah. like I'm I'm missing one. Uh, they're, you know, rates are going to, they're not going to lower the well, one. We're going to do three more times this year or three more times. We're going to do three times this year. The fed is saying, and That's other feds saying. are saying, I think we're only going to do one time. So no, they don't even know what they're no. going to do. I don't think they're going to do anything. I think we're going to have more negative numbers come out, Yeah, but they're skewed. And what I mean by that, let's look at the BLS jobs report. Shall we? The Bureau of labor statistics. Right. So that, so it, the report showed an increase of 303,000 jobs in the month of March, which was only above the expectation of 200,000 by 103,000. That's a lot. But we'll get into the report. Employment gains for January and February revised higher by 22,000. The unemployment rate decreased one-tenth of a percent to 3.8%, which was lower than estimates of the 3.9%. Right. Now, remember, the unemployment rate is what the household surveys when they actually make phone calls to people. If you answer the phone, you're exactly. unemployed. Yeah, you couldn't exactly. be just off that day. No, you're unemployed. You're unemployed. Yeah. Hello? Oh, you're unemployed. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, it's, the biggest thing I'm looking at is 68% of the job games came from three sectors. Leisure and hospitality, 49,000. Government was 71,000. Too many. Edu and that's all IRS agents, yeah. I'm sure. Education and health services, 88,000. Those aren't really major places like, hey, we create jobs. No. They, these are, uh, these are people they have going to back be. to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's also, if you look at the actual, so if you look at the numbers, we said we're supposed to have 303,000 versus a 200,000 estimate, right. right? But if you look at the overall non-seasonal average jobs, right? So if you take the, it really was 659,000 if you don't take the seasonal part out of it. 
that's huge yeah yeah but if you look at the ages of in the household survey when they called and said hey are you unemployed 16 to 19 year olds and this is weird so from 16 to 19 year olds and then nothing in between up to 55 plus there was 488,000 jobs created well that's because minimum wage is now 20 dollars an hour huh. and and robots have taken over right 20 <laughs> 25 to 54 year old we lost 48,000 jobs for wow. them if you look over the last three months uh full-time employment we've lost 256,000 jobs and we have gained 838,000 part-time jobs mm. and there are 217,000 people who you know job-wise who have now multiple job holders to make a living yeah so is that really good numbers no 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 but i do have a very good friend and past client who retired from the government many years at the government and opened up her own bookstore called bookish really she just had a grand opening i think yesterday so good for her that's creating a job that's creating a business that's cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm just i'm sorry i, just, I, just had, I was I'm i know proud that's of great her. i had I'm, to give her a plug well that's great and i'm happy for her i just hope it works in yep. this market where most people just order them online and, and that's it you should see how many people she had in her bookstore yesterday good that was open. pretty awesome yeah 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 that's and i'm glad book I'm happy, it, but yeah. have no clue the hours <laughs> Or where it is. <laughs> Go online. <laughs> Go online. Yeah, figure it out. Yep. Uh, so if you're looking at the purchase market, millennials are the ones driving the home purchase market. And um, they are they are outpaced the baby boomers as the largest group of home buyers. Wow. Which is not shocking because most baby boomers are already in their home. Yeah, we're fixing to and die. And they're not going to move. They're saying, we're staying here. We have a low freaking interest rate and we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And we have a lots of equity. equity yes. A shallots. All right, so the combined share of millennials, both younger ages, that's 25 to 33, okay. and 34 to 43 made up 38% of home buy and purchase market last year. Ooh. That was up from 28. So that's 10% more in 23 than in 22. Right. Baby boomers, uh, both younger baby boomers, 59 to 68, and older baby boomers, 69 to 77, 77 saw their share decrease from 39% to 31% during the same period. That's really not a huge. So basically what happened is those people didn't do They moved over to the, gave it to the millennials to yeah. purchase. They weren't competing against the people with the money. You that's going to happen this year. Yeah, thirty-two percent of all buyers in twenty-three were first-time home buyers, up from twenty-six percent the prior year. Yeah, with millennials comprising seventy-five percent of that demographic. That's big. That's huge. Yeah. And Generation X, which is ages forty-four to fifty-eight, also saw significant representation among first-time buyers. Shocking. Okay. We're speculating accounting for forty-four percent, and then and twenty-four percent of this group. So that's that's huge. But if you look at Generation Z which is 18 to 24 only accounted for 3% of all buyers. Well, it kind of makes sense. Well, yeah, cause you can't, yeah. you know, well now they're making $20 an hour. So yeah, they true. can go get yeah, a they house. Go get a hut, a uh, job at a hut. Yeah. Um, 31%. Well, the biggest thing is this period of time with, you know, between 18 and 24 that actually did it. 31% were single women. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because when they break up those, those women, they go out, get three jobs and a degree. Well, they're like, and oh, I have home. to support that son of a bitch yeah, anymore. No more of that dupe. I'm gonna go buy my own house, and he was sucking off of me. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like a sucker fish. A sucker fish. Yeah. Bottom feeder. Baby boomers remain the largest. This is like real shocking news here. Baby boomers remain the largest generation of home sellers, accounting for 45 percent of all sellers in 2023, down from 52 percent in 2022 shocking yeah really, yeah. Not really. <laughs> i'm just kidding what is is a gen y that's in between x and z i have no idea because there's a gap there of the uh from 25 up to you know 40 that's not no well millennials are ages 25 to 33 and then 30 uh, so 25 up to 43 okay and then uh the generation x um generation z is 18 to 24 so there's no gap there what? Just, just, 24 25 <laughs> just messing with you yeah hello you got your cal you want my calculator i need a calculator here's my calculator here someone help me with a calculator all right news next week uh -oh. we have uh tuesday small business uh, um, optimism index which is going to be down uh wednesday is mortgage application which is going to be down down consumer price index probably going to be up up uh 10-year bond auction probably not going to do that well 
and then the Fed minutes from 320 meeting saying, we don't really know what we're going to do, yeah. but we just tell everybody that we are focused on multiple cuts in the future. And then everybody else say, we don't know what we're going to do. They should right. just be quiet. Thursday, initial jobless claims, because it's every Thursday. Producer price index, and then the 30-year bond auction. And Friday is Michigan consumer sediment. sediment. Oh, oh. How much they, sediment is in Michigan? A lot. I can't. I hear you can't treat the water. I don't know. That's Wisconsin, wasn't it? That was Michigan. Wasn't that wasn't. It? I don't remember. Anyway, so that's why. The news. Why just Michigan's consumer confidence? Because they. That's all they have. <laughs> oh, and they're they just walk around confident. I'm gonna buy a house today. And it seemed like I've been watching some stuff today, and it seems like the uh, who what people call stars like with the rock and and all those other people are cons are finally realizing they should keep their politics out of their business. Well, if they want to continue to be in business. Yeah. The, the yeah. rock came out and said, I, he made a mistake, you know, supporting Biden and coming out supporting Biden. Yeah. He didn't say he made a mistake by supporting Biden. And that's why we are where we are. He just shouldn't he, have done it publicly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I, but I kind of took it as I made a mistake and I'll never make that mistake again. Because you got to remember, if, as a as a performer, whatever you do out there, if you take a side, you, lose, you just lose at least fifty percent of the people. Yeah, that can hurt your pocketbook. Yeah, it can. Yeah. And you know, for us, it's not going to affect us. <laughs> we repel enough people that then then bring the right ones to us. Yes, yes. The purpose We're, in business is to repel the people you don't want to work with, we are, so that the ones that want to work with you come to you, and that's uh, what we're looking for. So we're repellents. Yes, we are. Uh, no. I've always wanted to be a repellent. When I was little, I wanted to grow up and be a repellent. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think you've refused that with Republican. I'm just kidding. Well, I did do that too. The, the, I just think we're all in the middle. Okay. Not, most of us, 99% of us are in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I don't care what party you are. We're all in the middle. We, we believe the kind of the same thing. There's a couple different things you look at. And then you have that 1% split on each side that's so loud um, that it's just yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, batshit crazy yeah. and batshit crazy. But they're both... Uh, Guano. But what I want people to really look at is the all the issues this year. Look at when you go to vote. Don't just look at one issue. Yeah. And what I mean is because you're going to have one party going to focus on the abortion. Right. And then make it so loud that the other party is going to take that away from you. No, no, no. That was just, that was whoever put that in place back in the day did it wrong through the Supreme and the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, had to overturn it. Right. It's unless you have a uterus, it's not your fight. <laughs> it's true. So stay out of it. Only women should have this vote and they should come up with their own thing and they should have a party put together the, of women who come up and decide what this is. And that's just my opinion on it. Um, if you don't, if you don't have a uterus, stop talking. And if you think you have a uterus, but you really don't shut up. Too. Yeah. Go back over to the other <laughs> side. I'm sorry. You still can't get, pregnant. but I'm just, cause I talked to somebody and they were so adamant. They're not going to vote a certain way because of the abortion. But if you look at where our economy is and everything else, be, yeah. they don't even look at the other things that are affecting our economy. What's the, so bad. what's the saying? Cut your nose off to spite your face. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So just don't do it. Or looking for love in all the wrong places. One else too. <laughs> well, yeah, those are dirty, filthy bars. It's not love. That's just <laughs> a few minutes. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Yes, you did. Is that the end of Friday? That's the end of Friday. Wow. It's been a great week. It has uh, been. We'll be, um, remember, tomorrow is Saturday, and we'll be on the radio at 12 noon, and we're going to have David Albin, who is the firewalking guy who worked with uh, Tony Robbins for 50, over 15 years, went on to get NASA, and he's coming out here to do our firewalk for veterans. And uh, if you're a veteran or a first responder, if know somebody who's a veteran or first responder, reach out. Oh, that's not the ones I wanted. No, Let's you want that this one. one over here. Um, reach, get them out to join. We need you to sign up by Thursday so yeah. that we can know the numbers for each day. Really, most people will be coming on Saturday. So just focus on Saturday if that works for you, because it does start around five o'clock and it's really difficult for people to get off work on Friday and make it on that. Yeah. The purpose of Friday was originally just for us to, to have a nice run through and make sure Saturday was amazing. Amazing. It's but, gonna be amazing. So please, we need you to sign up. And if you want to help out, uh, sign up and show up on Friday. Yep. And then where's uh, it going to be? It is at Richard's Ranch out off of uh, Richard or Dur. No, it's Richard's Ranch. Stop doing that. Did stuff, they call people. it Richard? It's always been Richard's Ranch. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> and it's at 300 Grimes Road. Grimes. Yeah, so you, you can check it out. It's a beautiful barn. Everybody keeps thinking it's the other barn, and I'm not saying that word because people are going to key in on it. Don't again. go to that one. It's, it's Richard's Ranch. Yeah. Move on, people. It doesn't have the address on here. 
three hundred grand. Yeah, if you do that little QR code or you go to every, or go to Operation Firewalk, go to OperationFirewalk.com. That's OperationFirewalk.com. You'll have all your information. This is an older flyer, I guess, because the the new one has Operation Firewalk right across the top. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you go to OperationFirewalk.com. Yes, yes. Okay. OperationFirewalk.com. Okay, well, let's go to OperationFirewalk.com. What was it again? OperationFirewalk.com. All right, everybody, make it a great day. Thanks for being here, and we will talk to you next week on Monday. Uh, go out there, sell a home. If you need somebody to qualify, uh, I'm doing veterans. We got another one done in nine days. So there you and go. It's not an amazing job. It's just focused on doing it right from the beginning. And, and it just goes to show you, they don't take that long. No, they don't. You know what to takes take long, long is lazy as appraisers. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> well, the first one was I, not a lazy as appraiser. No, that guy was like, but the other guy, when they called to check on it, I have, I have until, until the fourth. Okay, whatever. That's my 10 days, and I'm not going to do anything but get it in on that time. Because I got a bowl of Rice Krispies here that are getting so I got to get caught up on my Netflix. <laughs> Make it a great Make day. it a great day. Enjoy the weekend. Listen to the radio show. Yes. Real Estate Jerk. And remember, OperationFirewalk.com. Bye, kids. Bye.